Hello and welcome to today's video. I am finally finished with the uh, Nissan Leaf battery pack sniffer. So the schematic and the layout are complete. They're done and uh, ready to send the files off. And um, yeah, I uploaded a bunch of videos, uh, time lapse of the entire process. And um, most people enjoyed it. I got a few people saying, hey, that was really cool. But uh, I also had a bunch of people unsubscribe, so it wasn't their thing, so, you know. Um, I guess they don't need to know about how electronics are made. But anyways, um, this design had a bit of free, uh, feature creep. Um, out of the original uh, prototype I built, the microcontroller is the same. Still got the DSPIC 33EP 256MU806 microcontroller in here, made by Microchip. And uh, still got that little display. It's the same uh, 16 character by two line display. Um, 5 volt to 12 volt boost converter. And a 5 volt to 3.3 volt linear regulator to power the microcontroller. And a voltage sense circuit that senses the input and the output. That was the same on the uh, servo controller. And a USB port. On the uh, on the um, version that I made with the servo controller, the, just the USB port just provides power. So some additions, I had uh, already a uh, micro SD card. So I threw that on there. I also threw on a uh, RS-232 serial port. And, um, oh, uh, CAN bus was on the other board too, of course. So this is still the same and uh, added some bicolor blinky LEDs, so green and red. And this is the power supply to run the micro SD card. And a clock, if we want to use, uh, so there's an eight megahertz clock on here. Typically I use the internal built-in oscillator inside the microcontroller. Uh, it doesn't actually need an external clock. However, it's not very precise and it's not very uh, temperature um, stable. So for USB the timing is actually critical enough that I need to run an extra clock. Uh, so we've got that. It uh, doesn't matter for CAN bus. CAN bus uh, works perfectly well um, outside of, you know, if your clock is off a little bit, a little faster, a little slow, CAN bus is able to sync because the uh, clock is embedded in it and that works out pretty good. And, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I added some little prototype, prototypey spots. You'll see that here in a second. So on the layout, <clears throat> here's the 3D view. Um, just occurred to me that I don't have a way to rotate this because I'm holding the phone. So this camera is probably heavy enough to hold down the shift button for me. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Um, oh wait, here, let's try it this way. Yes, okay. See, that's what we're talking about here. And I can rotate. So, underneath here, you can see I've crammed in a bunch of, um, you know, they got these capacitors for the boost converter, so those are your input-output capacitors. Serial port on the side here. Um, for the standard one, I'm, I don't think I'm going to populate any of the, to save cost, nothing's going to be populated except for the bare minimum to do the leaf sniffing. Uh, unless people really want everything else populated, there's not going to be any code to run it. But uh, I guess we can release the source code. Uh, there's a little pot here to adjust the contrast on the display. Come around to this side. This is a C grade connector. This is what will uh, go to the 3D printed. Um, plug that goes into the leaf pack. Under here is the micro SD card slot which won't be populated and here is the uh, micro or yeah micro USB connector which will be populated. So I gotta cut a little notch out here in the box on this side and cut a little notch out here. Uh, the seam of the box is like right here so that works out really well. Whoa wrong grab the wrong thing there. Uh, underneath here you got the LED um, you can see there's the microcontroller. Made a little prototype the area. Hold on, that's kind of upside down. Let me flip it around this way. So this is the uh, serial port 
probably not going to populate that. Um, this is a 5 volt regulator, take 12 volts to 5 volts. Uh, I made it so that that's not going to be populated, but if you wanted to power it, if you weren't using USB and just wanted to provide 12 volts and CAN bus, uh, this would take the 12 volts, generate the 5 volts to power the display, and then the 5 volt rail also powers the 3.3 uh, volt converter to run the microcontroller, so you wouldn't have to power it over USB. If your 12 volt side's already powered, you could, uh, you could use that. Um, there's where the crystal is, a little uh, bicolor blinky LED here, and uh, can trans or can um, level shifter I guess is over here, and uh, yeah, so it, it turned out pretty good. Fits in this little poly case box, and not drawn, not shown are. Um, well, let me go this direction. Not shown is. Uh, the connection between these two boards is going to be a ribbon cable um, and standoffs will support the display but uh, I didn't go and download the 3D models for those but yeah the well, standoffs go there so we'll uh, exit this by removing my camera and uh, and go back to 2D mode here. So here's the uh, layout proper. You can kind of see as uh, the top copper side. And I made this little prototype area. So we got all of port E available. And port E has like, that's all the PWM engine. Uh, these are all A to D channels. They're all peripheral pin select channels. So you can do like, you can make these three pins into a S clock, uh, serial data in, serial data out. Another S clock, serial data in, serial data out, and you make these two pins a UART. I mean, I've got, uh, if I reserve one UART for um, the serial port over here, there's three UARTs left. If I re and if I reserve one uh, SPI port for the um, uh, micro SD card, there's still three SPI ports available, so that lets you do all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, this is the programming connector. I put just, this is the same pin header that's on the pick kick pick kit 3 so if you want the code and you want to play with it you can uh, compile it in MPLAB and then uh, go ahead and program it yourself if you so are inclined and I, I labeled all of the pins uh, both top and bottom I have an I2C port uh, one of the few things on these that's not uh, it is remappable between like two or three different places but um, I dedicate I always dedicate a nice little I2C port, so if you wanted to add something, you can. This starts verging on, it starts becoming like a little prototype board, so I gave it some prototype -y area so you can solder in some off amps or, you know, whatever. And uh, we'll flip over to the bottom, literally flip it so it's the right direction. And um, yeah, so same thing on the back here, we've got uh, all the cans labeled, grounds labeled, totals labeled and 3.3 um, volts and ground are labeled there and uh, a lot more going on on the back side here because this is uh, if you unscrew it this back cover comes off and so you can get to everything so you can prototype on this side or the other side doesn't matter and um, yeah so I think it it came out pretty good uh, I'm quite happy with the layout uh, power supply is all shielded and grounded so hopefully it doesn't affect anything um, but yeah uh, let me just show you like what I'm talking about about uh, port E. Port E is not only the um, entire, uh, all of port E, uh, 0 through 7, so it's a full 8-bit port. But see these RP80, RPI81, RP82, RPI83, those are remappable pins, so you can remap them to different functions. It's also the uh, parallel master port, and it's also all the PWM engines, so you can do uh, low, high, low, high, and it's analog inputs 24 through 31 so these are like the super ports that do everything so I usually try to bring them over to port E because you never know when you might need to use one of these I and mean, that's what I used to do the um, the uh, the servo controller port E is actually where I have all my servos and I just you know wired it over to the display so on this I move the display over to um, port B uh, 7 through 14 here so that shouldn't be too bad and
and um, yeah, so I think that'll be neat. And um, yeah, everything else is for a can. Some the LCD control signals are over here, uh, the UART control signals, and uh, the two analog channels are over here for 5 volt, 12 volt sense. Uh, for the boost converter and uh, our USB ports over here, I squared C ports over here, the PWM that actually drives the um, boost converter is right here. And uh, this SPI port goes to the micro SD card over here. And, um, yeah, and then chip select and uh, card detector over there. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much everything. And then uh, there's, of course, the programming port which, like I said before, is the same pinout as the PIC Kit 3, so you can reprogram it. You can also use the ICD3, that's what I use for debugging. And, um, yeah, I think it, uh, I think it came out pretty good. Anyways, um, yeah, this video's gone really long, so, uh, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Bye.